Welcome Smithies. I'm Beth Raffeld. I'm the Senior Vice President for Alumni Relations and Development. Thank you for joining in our exciting reunion weekend 2021. There are nearly 2000 Smithies participating over the next three days, joining us from around the world. Each reunion class has created a unique experience inspired by your class leaders and reunion volunteers who have worked tirelessly to create a reunion experience that is rich and meaningful. As we all know, there's nothing more fun than gathering together with smart women. Reunion allows you time to connect with your classmates and to reconnect with what is happening here on campus. And I am confident that you will feel very proud of Smith today. Under Kathy McCartney's leadership, we have seen extraordinary thoughtful advances in curricular and co-curricular programming, record student application numbers, a reimagining of the liberal arts curriculum, new faculty hires, and attention to a refreshed landscape master plan. It's a great time for women's education and it's a great time for Smith College, now in its 150th year since its founding. Despite this challenging year of pandemic, Smith has stayed strong and excited about the future. The spectacular new Nielsen Library, which you see behind me, stands not only as an artistic centerpiece of our beautiful campus, but also in recognition of Smith's look to the future and all that is necessary to educate women of promise for the 21st century. Since the very beginning of Kathy's presidency, a new library was being envisioned. Extensive research and engagement of the larger Smith community brought forth innovative plans and exciting ideas. It soon became clear that Maya Lin was just the artist to make envisioning a reality. Maya's artistic mastery, her use of natural light, her brilliance to integrate and connect the inside and outside environments, and her understanding of function and form have created for Smith a library that is the envy of our peer institutions. Many of you may also know that Maya's mother, Julia Chang, graduated from Smith in 1951, having escaped communist China to come to the United States for her education. Maya's personal connection and her tribute to her mother come through the elegance in her design and her unique passion to integrate the old Nielsen Library with the new. This live webinar entitled The New Nielsen First Experiences features Susan Fliss, Dean of the Smith Libraries with members of the library team. Smith's library is not just about the beauty, function and comfort, it is a serious research center equipped with modern technology and open to the possibilities of the future. Thank you to all the alums and all the alumni donors who have stepped in to support this extraordinary new library. We are grateful to you for all you do for Smith. The college simply would not be here, nor would be thinking with innovation about the future without your support and your partnership. It's now my pleasure to introduce Susan Fliss, Dean of the Smith College Libraries. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, I'm Susan Fliss, Dean of Libraries, and it's, I am just delighted today to welcome you to New Nielsen Library. Thank you for all your support of the libraries, uh, our buildings, New Nielsen, our collections, and the programming uh, for teaching, research, and learning through the libraries. Um, one housekeeping note is at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A um, icon. If you want to click on that icon and type in questions, we'll take your questions at the end of this presentation. So we opened Nielsen on March 29th in the middle of a pandemic according to the culture of care guidelines that Smith gave us. 
people came in, they just loved the building. It was so wonderful after all these years to be able to have people come in and to have, our, especially our seniors, be able to have a couple of months experiencing this new library. We're going to show you today uh, a video prepared by Haley Dang. Haley is um, a new graduate class of 2021 and a film and media studies major. We asked her to create a video capturing students' first experiences of Nielsen. We thought you'd um, like to see this. Then I'll talk about the study spaces in Nielsen. Jean Ferguson will talk about the new services that we are planning for the fall. And Rob O'Connell will talk about the where our collections are, although you can see them, uh, you'll be able to see them in our pictures, where our collections are, and what's new with having special collections all in one building. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have time for questions and answers. So now we go with uh, the video that Haley has created for us. Cozy, grand, and inspirational. So when I left Smith, I guess it was in March of 2020, the library basically wasn't finished at all. Like they had the old part of Nielsen up, but the two extensions on the sides were covered. So just coming back to campus and being able to see the entire finished product, it's like the old in the middle, the new on the side. It was honestly amazing. I thought for sure it was going to be modern and updated and have good study spaces, but I didn't know what to expect. So then when it opened, I was immediately impressed by how truly beautiful the architecture is, how much it already feels like an academic community. My experience with the library so far has been really nice. It's been a really great place to kind of get away from the monotony in my room because I feel like especially with having remote classes this semester, it's really easy to fall into the cycle of waking up, getting ready, and then going to my desk for class and just doing that over and over again. So having the option of not only another study space, but a study space that I've never had the opportunity to use before was really nice to kind of inject some energy into my routine. Even with COVID restriction, it's still an amazing place to study. It has amazing view, and I can just sit here, read a book, browse through all the shelf. My favorite study spot at Nielsen would have to be, they have these like armchairs that have study dividers around them. And that was really cool. I was really excited to see that and I've already taken advantage of that. My personal favorite part of the library has probably been those private study rooms that have like a one person occupancy where it's just like a really big desk and a table. And it's really nice to have that space in the library where it's like, I'm still in a public space, but also there's a little bit more privacy and I don't really have to worry about being too loud. My favorite aspect of the library is, is not available yet, but it's the cafe on the first floor because it's a study space, but there's also a cafe, so that'd be amazing because I love to have coffee when I'm doing work. One of my favorite aspects about the new Nielsen is how much light there is. And I mean that in, I guess, two different ways. The first way is that because there are so many windows, during the day, studying in like any of the rooms just allows so much natural light to come in. And that's something that's kind of hard to find in a lot of campus buildings, where it's just kind of like the staple, like a certain number of windows, but like in Nielsen, there are walls that are windows. But the other way that I mean it is that at night, the light from inside Nielsen kind of projects onto campus and it kind of like illuminates the area around it. So walking by the library at night is just so beautiful. I'm gonna be doing my senior thesis for my senior year. So I'm expecting to spend 
a lot of time in the library and it's helped that there are so many great spots to sit at with amazing view. I'm really excited that during senior week, there's going to be a night at Nielsen where we get to dress up and spend time at the library. I'm really excited for that chance to kind of do something that's not studying in the library. It was really exciting to finally have a central library after three and a half years. It was definitely difficult to not have the large space with a lot of books to browse through. And so it's really exciting to finally have access to that. Also, not having construction in the middle of campus anymore. It's really exciting. It's bittersweet in a way, because, especially because I'm graduating. It's nice to have this space, and especially at this time, I feel at the end of the semester when there really is a lot of work to do and having the opportunity to study in a space like Nielsen is really nice. But also myself and all of my peers who are graduating only really have a couple months to spend as students in the library. So there's good, but there's also some sadness in there. I hope anyone who hasn't has the chance to experience the library will get to see it in person in the future because just seeing it through pictures or videos is not enough. For anyone who hasn't had the opportunity to come and see the new library in person, I would say that if you have the means, it's honestly something that you can't truly experience in any other way other than in person. During my time at Smith, one of the things that I've done is been part of the Gold Key Tour Guide organization, and I've given tours to prospective students and families coming to campus. And I know for a fact that when we start giving tours again in person, the library will be the highlight of the tour. I spent most of my Smith experience without a central library, but seeing the new Nielsen now, it was really worth the wait. I hope you can come and see it yourself in person soon. As someone who's about to end their Smith career really soon. I wish I had more time in Nielsen and if you have the opportunity to experience it, you definitely should. I hope you do visit it in person in the future and enjoy it as much as I do. Ariana Tidball, Smith Class of 2021. On Class of 2022. Emily Ahrensberger, Class of 2021. Thank, thank you, Haley. Uh, and there'll be question, time for questions for Haley at the end. Please enter them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. It's a beautiful building. Um, there, as you see from the pictures, there are books all around us, uh, all around the students. And that is something that students asked when we first talked about what should be in New Nielsen. Um, it makes you feel like you're in a library and we can't wait to have you come into the library when Smith is able to allow alums to come to campus. We look forward to having you in the library. So now we will continue with new Nielsen first experiences. Our next slide, please. Uh, teaching, learning and studying in new Nielsen. We just wanted to remind you of the guiding principles, which is this is a campus building. It's for multi-use, for uh, reading, studying, working together, working together um, in quiet spaces and in more um, noisy spaces. It's all rooms are flexible and accessible. We'll talk about study spaces, uh, services, and collections. Next slide, please. Study spaces. That was um, a beautiful shot from the top of the building on the terrace on the fourth floor. Now, as students have been in for two months, we've been tracking uh, what are their favorite spaces. So we take, we take counts of the different areas every day um, at every hour. So the most popular spaces have been the study areas in the north wing. And actually behind me, this is a shot of one of the study rooms on the third floor. That is the most popular. A similar room right underneath on the second floor is the second most popular. And the third is the skyline meeting room, which is on the fourth floor. Um, and students go to other places as well. Um, but we will show you more pictures so you can see why they tend to go to these others. Next slide, please. So this is a picture of the third floor study area. 
you can see all the windows. There's some bookshelves there as well, where we keep some of our collections. The furniture is all movable uh, and, and flexible. And we have different kinds of heights for chairs and different widths, different kinds of tables to make it, um, to make any use of the library um, as easy as possible for our students. Next slide, please. And this is a picture of the Skyline Reading Room on the fourth floor. You can see the oculus to the right with the sun shining off of it and the glass that circles it. Students studying here quietly. This is a reading room, a quiet reading room. And you can see the doors out onto the terrace. You can see why this is a popular room. Next slide, please. And this is the terrace. Um, it will be, it is, uh, when it is open, um, when students come back in the fall, it will be a popular place. Um, it's just so lovely to be able to see the campus and the mountains, the Holyoke mountain range from this area. And to see all the trees and, and, and other plantings on campus, you get a different view of it. Next slide, please. This is the uh, former Collicott reading room, you may remember. Um, it's now the Lane Reading Room, and we brought back tables from the original reading room and have some, quite, um, some nice cozy study nooks to the right. You can see those are benches where you can stretch out. And farther at the end of the room are our atlas cases with our atlas collection. Next slide, please. And uh, this is, I know that people are gonna ask, do you have carols, our carols back? This is on the ground floor, uh, right off of the sunken garden. And you can see what a beautiful view this is. This is a winter, wintry day. There's some soft seating um, to the left here with students sitting and there's little tables for them to put their laptops and their books and their coffees, covered coffees uh, there. And on the right, you see the carols. So these are carols that, will make you think of the times that you spent in carols when you were here. On the other side of the carols, farther right, that's where we have the compact shelving. And you can actually see the compact shelving as well, all the way down to the bottom of the, through the hallway there. Next slide, please. So we wanted, so in the, in the video, a student, one of the seniors talked about senior night. St students couldn't have their regular senior gala this year. So instead, uh, we improvised and offered senior night at the libraries. Students could get dressed up um, and come into the library, roam around with their friends, take selfies in different ways. And then the college treated them to strawberries and champagne. The next slide, please. So here are a couple of pictures. So here's a group selfie that students took. Um, I think this was on the second floor, the large of the North Wing. <laughs> they had a great time. Next slide, please. And this is one of those more glamour shots that was taken also on the second floor. Love this um, picture with the reflection of the books. This is actually the exhibition gallery. This is very new for us. It's a large ex exhibition gallery we'll, where we'll be able to showcase our special collections. The, book ca the, the cases are not yet in, but in the meantime, it's a great spot for a glamour shot. Next slide, please. And this is um, up on the uh, fourth floor um, in the Skyline Reading Room taken through the glass of the Oculus. Next slide, please. And um, staff, this is Julie Ohatniki, who was there to help students take, we were able to take pictures on their own phones so that they could take that with them. Um, that they had such fun moving the furniture around and positioning for great shots as groups. And next slide, please. And now it's uh, Jean Ferguson, who is the Director of uh, Learning Research and Technology, who will talk us through services. Uh, I, I also was there with Susan on senior night and it was just so joyful to be able to see all the students and see them uh, enjoying the Nielsen Library. Uh, and you can see that in the pictures. Um, so I'm going to tell you about uh, the services, some that we have started and some that we are planning for Nielsen Library. So this is actually a picture behind our makeshift service desk right on the first floor when you enter from the Sealy Lawn uh, 
let's see, there we go. And uh, part of our services or part of our service planning has been a lot of collaboration with campus partners. And one of our key collaborators has been ITS. So we really want to um, have as easy a, a user experience for students when they come in the library. And so to that end, we are combining both the IT help desk and the main library's service point, service desk in Nielsen, uh, so that there's just a single point that students can come to where they can both um, ask for research assistance, they can check out a book, they can ask a question, they can check out um, IT equipment such as AV equipment, they can get help with technology um, or make an appointment with uh, any of our expert consultants. Um, and so we're really excited uh, to get this started and this will actually be down on our ground floor with a much more beautiful desk than we're currently using. Uh, so here's a here's a, a nicer photo uh, looking looking down from the mezzanine down to our makeshift central service point. Another new service point is our learning commons, and this is also on the first floor of Nielsen. Um, and this is another one of our partnerships. So um, the the concept behind the learning commons is around supporting students through various um, support mechanisms. Um, without them needing to, to determine who is the best person to talk to. So it's a partnership between the libraries and IT. And then also we're working with the Jacobson Writing Center, the Spinelli Center for Quantitative Studies, and the Office for Disability Studies. And so we will have members of all of those teams available, um, as well as students. We're, we're finding that a lot of our support probably will be from student writing tutors, we're starting a new peer-to-peer -peer student research assistant program. And there are also students that are tutors with the Spinelli Center and students that work with um, the Office of Disability Services. Um, and the idea being that a student can come in and say, I need help with a project or I'm struggling with, in, um, you know, with my study skills or my time management, uh, you know, a variety of ways. And then we can find who are the right people for them to meet with and make sure that they're getting the support they need. The idea behind the learning commons is that it's it's not um, it's not for students only that are having problems. It's to help any student to really thrive in their scholarship. So we're excited to see uh, how these partnerships really make all of our um, campus services available to students. And this is a picture of the learning commons. Um, it's on the first floor. So the sort of the bottom part of the picture is the first floor. And then there's a lovely mezzanine up on the second floor that goes um, around it. There are also two seminar rooms that are part of the Learning Commons that we will use both for tutoring and for workshops, but will also be available uh, through the registrar to schedule for classes. And so we'd like to prioritize as much as possible uh, first year seminars or other uh, classes that have an adjacency to the type of services that are being offered in the learning, learning commons. And the last service I'll tell you about is the Digital Media Hub. Um, the Digital Media Hub, as we've been developing the service, has grown from a single service point, which is down on the ground floor of Nielsen Library, to really a constellation of different digital scholarship services. And so um, we've begun thinking of the Digital Media Hub as, as um, both a location to do media production, but also to work with GIS, which is Geographic Information Systems and Digital Mapping. Um, we have two experimental studios that are over an alumni gym, which is connected to Nielsen by an underground tunnel. And we're hoping to work with courses to experiment with new methods or new technologies in those spaces. Um, and we have a large uh, lab, a large, essentially a computer and teaching lab that will be on the second floor of Alumni Gym, where we'll be able to teach uh, workshops or work with courses on projects um, on a variety of different digital scholarship methods. So uh, we also have two beautiful studios in this space, and here I'll show you a picture. So this is the Digital Media Hub down on the uh, ground floor of Nielsen Library. And uh, actually, the picture is taken with my back to the uh, sunken garden, 
You can actually see my shadow in the glass there taking the picture. We have a, a computer lab. Um, there will be computers on the tables that are that are uh, sitting in the front of the photo there uh, for, for media production. And then we have two studios um, that are available for both uh, media and audio production um, that really are equipped to be as flexible as possible um, so that we can work with students and, and other members of the community to create um, different types of uh, media for their courses or for their projects. Okay, I'm going to turn it over Rob, to Rob, and he's going to tell you about collections. Thanks so much, Jean. Hi, I'm Rob O'Connell. I'm the Director of Discovery Access and Digital Engagement, and my team oversees a lot of the access to the collections, as well as uh, the life cycle of the collection, so ordering and placing material on the shelves. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the collections and some of the decisions that we made and starting with the general collection today. Next slide, please. So we brought back about 255,000 items into New Nielsen. This was part of a, uh, a plan that started at the beginning of the project. A combination of librarians and faculty reviewed the collection to see uh, which items were needed for courses, which were high use items. These are the items that we decided to bring back into New Nielsen with the remaining of the collection being up at our high density storage facility in Hatfield, Massachusetts. So as you've seen from some of the pictures, you'll notice that there's a mixture of perimeter shelving, giving you the feeling of being in a library as the collection surrounds you. There's about 40, 45,000 items that are on floors G, level G through uh, level three. And that's a mixture of things from technology to the sciences to also literature. Uh, there, we tried to make sure that there was a, a mixture of material um, on those upper floors. On the bottom floors, as you saw from the um, picture that Susan showed uh, with the carols, we have compact shelving now, which allows us to store our material much more efficiently than we could in old Nielsen. About 80% of our collection is actually down there in, that, in those stacks. And the bulk of those are things from history to literature. Um, there's some um, psychology down there as well. That's where the main component of our collection is. And we'll, we're, we've um, created this space so that we can grow it throughout the years. We have about 10 years worth of growth here. So that's very exciting for us because we'll be able to continue adding new books as we purchase them throughout the years. In the cafe, we've uh, added new magazines and journals. This is a great place to access um, both academic and general reading uh, magazines while you're having your coffee or doing uh, you know, some general research. On the third floor, we have our bound periodicals. This is where um, the bulk of our bound periodical collection is located. And this surrounds the third floor from the, um, the interior of the space all the way around the, um, the north wing of the building. We can go to the next slide, please. So there is a picture of that, um, the perimeter shelving. And I should mention that it's not just um, uh, the general collection that we brought back. We also uh, brought back a, a large amount of reference material. Uh, we have uh, new fiction, nonfiction. We have some language learners on the ground floor. These are easy access material that is directly located from one of our service points. Next slide, please. And here's a shot of our compact shelving. So we're able to store uh, the bulk of our collection very efficiently. Um, there, we're also able to sort of expand it out um, as we as we grow the collection in the future. Next slide. And here are those uh, magazines and journals. Uh, we store both things on both shelves as well as uh, foldable. There are shelves that fold out so that we can store back files behind the newest editions, probably something similar to you've seen in, uh, in the public libraries or other um, institutions that you may have visited. Next slide. So I'm also going to be talking about our special, special collections. So the south wing of our building is completely um, devoted towards special collections. 
And this is the first time ever we're going to have all three of our special collections in one location. So our Sophia Smith collection, our college archives, as well as our rare books are all going to be located in the same space, which is really exciting for us. This allows us to access material and bring it out into the reading room area. Uh, students can engage as well as uh, researchers and faculty can engage with archivists right in the same spot. Everybody can sort of do work together, which is the first time we've really been able to do this. Now, the special collections area has something very unique to it, which is the box inside of a box. So this is our way of storing the collection in a very climate controlled manner and allows you to sort of see it from the outside without touching any of the material uh, on the inside. This box expands from the ground floor all the way up to the fourth floor and can be seen on all the levels, which is really, really exciting. As you can see, there's a number of um, uh, other components to special collections will be able to take tours of the stacks as well as looking at um, these new mobile exhibit cases, which are going to be right, out, right outside of the space on the second floor mezzanine. Next slide, please. So here's a view of the reading room area, which has a fantastic view, probably one of the best, uh, quite frankly, in the building. And you can oversee the um, the Mount Tom region, as well as a, the, a large portion of the campus on the Green Street side. Next slide. Here's a view of some of the shelving that's gonna be used. So this is the box with inside the box. We're also using a mixture of fixed shelving as well as compact shelving to efficiently store this material here as well. Next slide. And again, another picture of that compact shelving. This is pretty uh, standard throughout the building. And again, really allows us to efficiently store our material and allows a lot of room for growth, which is very exciting. We're able to, to grow our special collections throughout the years. Next slide. And of course, uh, this presentation would not be complete without me saying that the Acorn printing press is coming back, which is very, very exciting component of, of the new building. And there it is in all its glory right there on the third floor. 